Hello and welcome to News Click. After the recent fiasco relating to Cambridge Analytica and its use of Facebook data, we really need to be concerned about how our Facebook profiles are being used to manipulate our choices. To discuss this issue, we have with us today Prabir Purkayasta, the editor in chief of News Click. So, Prabir, firstly, this uh, this Facebook data, this whole issue is being termed as a Facebook data breach by and this uh, expose done by Channel 4 News. How accurate is it to call this a data breach? Well, that's an interesting question because honestly, Facebook did allow uh, Professor Coogan, who was an assistant professor in Cambridge, uh, access to the data through a particular app that he had developed. Mm -hmm. Either Facebook was not aware or Facebook allowed Cambridge Analytica, who had an agreement with uh, Professor Coogan, that this data could be used by Cambridge Analytica. And they had, uh, now it transpired, paid $800,000 to Professor Coogan for this mm. particular data, particular app to be developed. Mm. It's also interesting that uh, the, the, the whistleblower who came on uh, Channel 4, mm. he said Professor Coogan financially did not benefit from this. It was really something that he helped Cambridge Analytica to do. Let's take that on face value. The purpose of this app was to find out psychometric data of the people. Yeah. So if you gave or you answered the question, mm. and then what kind of personality you would be, would be then mapped by the app. And since you, they sent the people who took the quiz that was given to this app, they were also told that if they agreed to the, the, their receiving a profile of themselves, they'd be, they should also uh, uh, download the app and install it. Hmm. Once the app was installed, 270,000 people's data was collected by Cambridge Analytica, which may not seem a large number. But what came along with that were all the friends' data oh. whose privacy settings were kept open. Hmm. And obviously, Facebook made two mistakes. One is the, shall we say, the nature of its internal privacy the settings, the security, the defaults are all to be are all to be questioned. That if they allow apps to harvest data on the scale mm. through a few people, then I think there is something seriously wrong with the way they maintain the security of the Facebook uh, uh, settings, the privacy settings uh, for its users. The second part of it is that this data should have been monitored to mm. check what actually was being removed mm. from the Facebook servers. And the fact that 50 million Facebook users' data was actually accessed to these 270,000 profiles would seem to indicate they kept no check on what kind of data was being harvested to see at least that this does not happen. Now, is it a criminal violation? Was it a data security breach? Strictly no, mm -hmm. because the... Uh, Facebook settings allow this to happen. Facebook settings allow this to the, any user to see your friends' likes. Yeah. And since it allows you to see your friends' likes, this app also could conceivably mm. uh, see the friends' likes and therefore could get your friends' choices as well. Mm. Now, this therefore cannot be called a data hack or a data breach in this sense, that it was not a criminal activity which was done by breaching basically Facebook security. Mm -hmm. Facebook allowed this to happen. Did they allow it consciously? Probably no. They're very unhappy about it today. Mm -hmm. And they did give notice to Cambridge Analytica uh, that this data should be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It should not be stored. They claim they've destroyed the data. It makes no difference because once the data is removed, mm -hmm. it is massaged, created different files. It can always be said, this is really not Facebook data anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I think Facebook's uh, notice uh, later on that they should destroy the data, they should uh, they should not keep it, etc., becomes locking the stable uh, door after the horse has been stolen, mm -hmm. and I don't think they have legal traction on that either. Mm -hmm. So I think all said and done, it shows a fiasco on Facebook's part, and the fact that they don't really protect their users that is very clear. And that's for something which Facebook has to apologize to its people. And it also shows the amount of information mm -hmm. that, that Facebook really gathers for each one of us. But the second part of it is Cambridge Analytica certainly was, uh, shall we say, less than scrupulous at best that we can say, if it was not criminal, in having harvested this data 
from Facebook because they had not taken permission from whom they had, this data was being finally taken. Okay. They had taken permission for only 270,000 people. Yeah. So it could be argued that this is at least a breach of ethics, hmm. if not a criminal exercise. Certainly in both uh, Facebook's account, the laxity with which they have handled this, and on the purpose of Cambridge Analytica, the fact that they have been definitely unscrupulous. The mm. way they hid their uh, purpose through Pro Professor Coogan, approach Facebook as if it was a research project and use it for purely commercial purposes later on, creating profiles of 50 million Americans. I think both, both these are to, be, are to be seen for what they are. Mm. Criminal uh, liability for Facebook? No. Definitely uh, something they should be ashamed of and should apologize to the view for their users? Yes. That so much of power is given to Facebook over us, mm -hmm. something for us to be concerned about. So moving on to the next thing, we have a very common phrase in these days that data is the new oil. And I think this case is, makes it very evident how analytics has just, uh, data analytics is being used at this scale to really manipulate our choices. How has Cam Cambridge Analytica done that? Now, Cambridge Analytica did this by using methods which had been developed by two researchers, Kosniski and Stilwell, who had run this earlier, the same psychographic or psychometric approach, personality test on Facebook and so on, and figured out that by, if they look at what your likes are, then they can create a psychographic profile of you. It was interesting that Kosniski's data showed that with about, I think, uh, some 68 or 86 likes, some X number of likes, they could predict whether the person was a man or a woman. Mm. They could predict whether he was black or he was white. They could predict whether he was gay and so on. So it shows that our likes, what we like on Facebook, says a lot about us. Yeah. And therefore, if we know what we like, the psychographic profile is easy to create. And this is where Cambridge Analytica's interest came from, mm. that if we can harvest these likes of Facebook, as Kosniski and Stilwell had showed, mm. and that's where Coogan came in, then we can create psychographic profile of the users. Once you create that, then you can manipulate him or her into making various choices. Mm. One example could be, for instance, if you're selling guns. You, and if you know the person that you're targeting that advertisement to is a person who is insecure, uh, who's probably uh, therefore uh, anxious as a personality, then you could show that at night there is a fist smashing through your window pane. Mm. And uh, then you say protect your home and then buy a gun. Now, for a person who is, say, much more secure, who is not really bothered about this, uh, he doesn't think his house is going to be bargained and he needs a gun for that, you could show him a picture that you're, you're taking our, your son out and shooting birds, teaching him how to shoot. So it's a family picture in which you are really talking about the gun as a sport. So here is the same gun being sold, but for two very different purposes. Mm -hmm. And if you know how to target your advertisement, then you are likely to be more successful. Yeah. Now, this is not a Cambridge Analytica issue. It's an issue which spans all big data today, as you called it, the new oil, because it's really the availability of huge amounts of data which we create through our digital footprints every day on the internet that we also reveal a lot about us. Mm -hmm. And it is said that Facebook knows us better than our mothers do. Now, given that, that Facebook or any of the digital platforms knows us so well, or this data can be collected from collating different digital sources, we have reached a point that it's easy to manipulate people into buying things yeah. or in voting. Yeah. So therefore, the psychographic profile means that you have now the ability to change people's behavior at scale. Mm. This is Professor Shoshana Zuboff has said that this, the, all these platforms like mm. Google, Facebook and others have the ability to change people's behavior at scale. Mm. And this is what big data is all about, changing our behavior at, at scale, trivially to buy things which we don't need, mm. but in a fundamental danger to society, also our electoral choices. Mm. And therefore our electoral choices which were 
less mediated by technology, but more listening to the people on television, in, in public speeches, where there's an almost, you can call a direct link between the people and the candidate, today is being broken yeah. and mediated through these kind of tools by which people will make choices which are really governed by how, what they feel, their fears, their prejudices, and playing on that. And of course, on that we have the addition of fake news. Yeah, fake, like ads is one thing. We're pushing ads, Facebook also does that. Facebook uses our data to push ads. But then the issue of fake news comes up. And like even that can be used to manipulate our choices, of course. And if they have the data, then they can use that to show us the kind of fake news we would fall for. And now with these increasingly interesting and more uh, sophisticated tools coming up, I think that's also becoming much easier. Well, that's, uh, that's the real issue, that Facebook's anger at Cambridge Analytica is that this kind of thing should be restricted to only Facebook. They should have the ability to manipulate our choices mm -hmm. and they should uh, be able to manipulate, therefore, what ads we see. Yeah. Now, once this becomes available, this profiling web becomes available with others, then of course they can also play the advertisement game, but that's only one part. The part that is dangerous for us and for democracy in the future is what happens if messages are tailored mm -hmm. to our prejudices and our hate, our fears and so on. What I would call as the instincts which are, which are more easy to be manipulated. Hmm. and uh, not so much the cognitive arguments that, you know, you give an argument of reasons why A is better than B and you should vote for A instead of B. But identify essentially, is he more favorable to certain communities yeah. which you are prejudiced against? Hmm. Paint the person that he is, say in India, that he is pro-Muslim, that hmm. you, you always talk about any affirmative action which for disadvantaged communities as somebody who's only helping that community mm -hmm. and therefore is basically creating vote banks. Mm -hmm. So this whole argument about vote banks that was mm -hmm. created for instance by the BJP was really to say that anybody who talks about secularism is actually talking about a vote bank. Mm -hmm. In the United States it was against anybody who talks about affirmative action or talks about social welfare is only helping uh, certain black communities who don't do any work, mm. welfare queens, etc., etc. So they become coded words to mean something else. Mm. And in that context, to play hateful messages, yeah. for instance, riots, pretending a lynching which has taken place in Pakistan as a lynching which has taken place, say, in Muzaffarnagar, mm. etc. All this can be made to create riots, create hatred, and therefore tilt the voting preferences. Mm. And in this, we are really entering into what somebody has called infocalypse. That means it's not just uh, apocalypse, but we are creating information which can change the way societies go. Yeah. And we are societal choices, not just only electoral choices. And these societal choices can be created by instruments, not only fake news, which can at least be easily uh, captured by, say, searching through the images to a Google image search and finding out that it is fake. But we are today creating tools by which you can manipulate images so well that even these images that you make are not going to be captured from by a Google image search is mm. fake. Mm. You will actually have your image mm. on a body, your face on a body which is not yours, mm. doing things which you are not doing. But it is so seamless that no Google search is going to show that as fake that easily. Mm -hmm. so because it's no longer a face that you're searching for, but the body. Mm. So this kind of uh, visual uh, tweaking, shall we say, or visually creating false images are very, very easy today with the kind of AI tools we are building for image, uh, shall we say, image editing. Mm. Similarly, you can have, and there's an example of Barack Obama giving a true speech that he really gave, and Barack Obama's face giving a speech which he didn't give. Mm. Again, using tools, audio editing tools, by which you it's totally lip synced. You cannot make out which is false, which is uh, not. Yeah. So if these tools are used, then the fake news ecosystem is facing a scenario where you can actually create 
almost real life images which are far more difficult to discern what is true and what is false. And if you combine this with all the other things we have talked about, we are really entering a different zone. Now, how do you prevent it? That is the next question. I have no easy answers, but I would suggest that we should really look at regulating, we should look at informing the public, and we should uh, digital education of the public to be more discerning has to hand, has to ha go hand in hand mm. with actually legislating new laws for the digital realm and regulating the platforms who have become much more powerful than any country today. Thank you, Prabir, for joining us in this discussion. It was certainly very enlightening to have you talk about all of this. And uh, thank you for watching this clip.